Let's talk about Masters of the Air, Episode 8. So we'll give our scores and our overall thoughts, and then we'll announce spoilers. So do you want to go ahead and give your score first for Masters of the Air, Episode 8? Sure. I enjoyed this one as well. It was similar to last week, I feel like. Definitely felt like another setup episode, well, for the finale, of course. But I still enjoyed it. I think overall, I'd probably give it a... I'm teetering between a 7 and an 8. I'll probably give it a, a 7 out of 10. Okay. Yeah, for me, I was a little let down by this episode because we've had... I mean, it was kind of similar to the last one. Definitely felt a lot like set up for the finale. This one just felt mm -hmm. a little more rushed to me. There for were definitely sure. some shots that I liked and some really cool scenes, but there was also stuff that just didn't really work for me. So I'd say it averages out to pretty neutral, maybe slightly above average. So I gave this one a, a six. I feel like it could have benefited from being longer and there were things that I wanted to see more of and uh, yeah. it felt like they could have split it into multiple episodes. Still a great show. I'm still really enjoying the show, but this one felt a little weaker than past weeks, especially like episode five and six. It was. Yeah, oh yeah those yeah. are like peak. And for the time they're at in the war, I thought that this time period would have been given a little more time. So we'll talk more about that in the spoilers. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. Like there were some moments where I just didn't feel the buildup. Like it didn't, like they almost downplayed certain things. Even though I get like, they're not focusing on that specific thing, which we'll talk about in spoilers, but like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, get, I do get what you're saying. Yeah. In introducing new characters. Very like, quickly. Yeah. In the second to last episode. Right. Right. <laughs> Especially because so why... they, they've like been in promotional materials and they felt like they would be more impactful, but I don't know. They, yeah. they still might be in the, in the last episode, to be fair. It just felt like really rushed in this one. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So I do get what you're saying. Like I could see a six. Definitely. We'll talk about it in spoilers. Yeah. yeah. Let's get into spoilers now. So spoilers for masters of the air episode eight. This started off with the Tuskegee Airmen, and I thought all of their scenes in the air were really fun to watch, but they also were just really quick. Super quick. Definitely. Like, it almost... I don't like it was so quick it was almost let down I was almost let down and also just to step it back to even the last episode where they say we're gonna use you as bait and let them like mm -hmm. take out the fighters like I was expecting to see some of that we didn't really see any of that we saw no, we I didn't think, that's right yeah yeah we saw two really quick Tuskegee Airmen scenes and those planes are so fast and like firing the missiles and stuff it all looked so cool like, they were cool but, but the, it, well, you're right it was quick and it was with characters we just met and that's why I feel like we could have had a whole episode or I feel like they could do a whole mini series on the Tuskegee Airmen. That's this side, really, yeah. Yeah, a really interesting group, mm. especially for the time period. And it just feels like we got them for just a little bit just to set up some scenes in Germany with Buck and Alex. Oh yeah, Alex. Alex! <laughs> I like that name. Yeah. So yeah, I uh -huh. feel like it could have benefited from being longer or split into different episodes. You I know. did like their scenes at the camp with Bucky and Buck and them. For sure. I really liked Buck's line to kind of ease the tension. He's like, well, I knew you weren't a spy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, that, was a good, that was a good line. But it's just, it, it plays into like an interesting thing because you're right. It's like it's in the 1940s. So obviously there's, you know, even more racism and everything back then. Yeah, racial and, tensions and, and everything. And there is now. And so like, yeah, so it's interesting seeing like they're fighting for the same country. We're on enemy camp. We're Americans together. I don't know. I like the camaraderie because of their situation they're almost forced to yeah like I, I also don't think buck cared regardless but still i i, I know I, I found it very interesting because you could tell they were guarded understandably yeah I mean, for sure you know, 40s <laughs> i did enjoy that aspect of the episode a lot like the whole camp yeah i liked all the camp stuff them like making plans for all the different possibilities scenarios yeah scenarios yeah. of what what could happen and using the stump remover to train up the men and get them stronger under the guise of stocking up for the winter i thought that was a smart plan yeah everyone just get the they spin that uh tool to pull out stumps and like just keep the rotations faster you know just rotate more and more and more and we'll use that to kind of get muscle and uh, what were the three scenarios he's like well either you know we'll either have to attack our way out they'll move us yeah or there, what was it? there's one other they'll be one be freed uh, or something or 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 execution yeah. i think was the last one no there, there you go the move us execution or we're fighting our way out <laughs> yeah fight slash escape yeah escape yeah so 
all that was interesting and they're used was did they use alex or was the other guy for the mapping it was alex yeah i thought that was really cool because yeah. they set up some of his art stuff before and then it just makes sense mm -hmm. that he'd draw a map and buck sees that potential and he's like man our maps aren't nearly this good we need you to help us out yeah so like that was part of the episode and in that too, in Stalag Luft 3, I also thought seeing Bucky go kind of stir crazy was interesting and get in the fight with Buck. And he, he's yeah. like playing out baseball games and just wants to like loaf around. And, yeah, he got it crazy in a way. Yeah, he was definitely getting like, a little unhinged. Losing his mind. <laughs> I, I did like though, after Buck punches him in the face, he definitely seemed to put himself together a little bit more and be like, okay, we do need yeah. to figure out some of these plans. And Because they had mentioned they were, they've been at the camp for what, eight months now? Yeah. I think that's what... something like that. And then of course, then it goes you know they're fighting and talking and then the germans kind of start freaking out like get to your bunker get to your bunker and then buck's like oh it happened like they made land they've landed like, yep that's the other half of this episode that i was actually that was the part this is the part i was disappointed in i get it it's not about d-day but d-day is such a big thing and it felt so glossed over yeah even we'll talk about the stuff before but at one point crosby wakes up from like three days of sleeping is like oh man mm -hmm. i missed it and i was like yeah i'm feeling kind of the same way we missed it <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> yeah i just i don't know like again i know the show not, isn't about d-day but like i don't know you gotta feed us a little bit d-day is such a big thing or we they hardly should they didn't even show him flying really except for like a two second flashback yeah and it was a flashback it wasn't even at the yeah, time yeah like I, I was expecting a build up like oh shoot d-day's coming they even kind of did a build up with like crosby not getting any sleep for three days and that's true yeah i thought some of those shots were really cool looking like when he was getting sleep deprived and like people were moving by him fast and he, he was out of it i thought some of those shots were really well done yeah because he had to write out write out the mappings for all these missions and people and not gonna sleep until it's the mission's done they're all telling you, you need to get sleep dude <laughs> like <laughs> yeah he's like snarky with the doctor he's like yeah i'll definitely do that and then just like takes a bunch of the pills when the doc told him to just take well, one. that's right because he's like <laughs> even the narration he's like oh yeah we're up to the point where coffee doesn't work anymore so yep. he goes to the doctor to get some medicine to keep him up the doctor's like just one okay doc <laughs> yeah and then like you said he passes out he's got this tipping point like we're ordering you to go to bed and as he's walking out like he passes out and wakes up three days later and missed everything <laughs> yeah sleep deprivation is no joke and i feel like they showed that well and his acting in they that did. parts where he was a little unhinged was really good too him hearing the ticking and it just ended up being his watch and he you could tell he was so mm -hmm. on edge going crazy yeah because you're right it's like sleep deprived is just as bad as you know anything else it's like you yeah. might as well be not be there so like that part was interesting so like those little elements like at the camp and crosby stuff interesting but again then it was the camp with the p-51 pilots that just wasn't a lot of time with them so i didn't get the feel of their base and, yeah and i i liked those scenes you know. they seem like interesting characters mm -hmm. they're like talking about their girls back home or that other guy was talking about the the like yeah, land the he was land. getting yeah it seemed like a close-knit group and would have been cool to see but yeah we just didn't get a lot of time with them yeah almost none and by the time we knew it they're flying and then like two seconds later he's like yeah let's go down under the clouds like i didn't come all this way to just fly and then like literally he shot some a few bullets one guy one ship got hit another air airplane got hit and then by the time I know it, he's on the ground. Like, it was literally that quick. It was. So, like, I, I was a little disappointed in that. And then again, the building up to D-Day, we didn't even, like, we saw them getting ready to fly out, right? But, like, we didn't even see it. Like, literally, who who was explaining it? Was it uh, Rosie. Rosie explaining it? Yeah. And then it was just, like, two, there was, like, literally, like, five seconds of, yeah. like, showing a glimpse of it. And then, like, it was over. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, okay, D-Day's done. I guess that part's done. It's definitely a different take on World War II than most yeah. things that I've seen. And I, I get it in the sense of like, I totally understand. Like, I don't like the ground war and all that. And like, I get we don't necessarily need to see it, see it. I just thought the build up to it would be cool. Like them getting ready, them being nervous, them flying. And then all of a sudden, like seeing it all, just like craziness. it would have been cool being there with them but uh whatever it is what it is a couple of other interesting scenes that i definitely want to touch on one the sandra spy storyline oh yeah 
that mm -hmm. also felt i don't know if rushed is the right word it seems like they're setting up for something but i don't know if we're gonna get a real payoff or like i don't see what the payoff is yet they they spent a lot of time I, following her sneaking through france and getting to this building but that's we still what i don't... mean what's the point they, they show a lot of time of her and at first i'm like is she like a german spy or something is she like actually bad or something but it goes nowhere like, frosby gets put on leave for a month right so he wants to see her one last time and gets the message to her or she's he's trying to get a message to her and gets to like her assistant or someone and she says or they say she's upstairs he gets up there and she like leaves a note basically saying sorry i missed you probably for better you should be with your wife or what's her name i don't know his wife's name gene or something uh, yeah you're right though they showed her a lot earlier in the episode so i was like I was a little confused. Yeah, and I actually... Like, what was the showing all that stuff? I liked the tone of those scenes. Like, it felt like a spy thriller, mm -hmm. which was, like, a yeah. an interesting set piece in this. Felt like but, James Bond or something. Yeah, James Bond but, movie. but then it didn't really go anywhere. But who knows? It could come back up in the last episode. I'm sure it's going to be a longer episode, so it could just be set up. But for right now, I'm like, I have no idea where they're going with this. It just felt a little out of place. I mean, hopefully, if, if they don't wrap up that in the last episode, it, it's almost like a waste of storyline it would be i feel hopefully like. they yeah like all of that would be pointless i guess well it wouldn't have been pointless if she would have just been in that one episode when crosby goes to the meeting with everybody right use her as a way for crosby to work through his feelings or whatever yeah yeah but then they kept kind of going back to her and so now there has to be something else because uh, otherwise especially when they showed her specifically her yeah and not through Crosby, like actually her and the last scene i wanted to talk about i have a question for you when mm -hmm. the tuskegee airmen that got downed were being interviewed by the ss person did he feel mm -hmm. more incompetent than the one that interviewed Bucky? Because to me, it felt like he was kind of a joke. Some of his scenes almost felt like funny, where he was like, yeah, I don't know. He didn't seem as like he was really trying to, or wasn't doing well at getting them to talk. Whereas I thought Bucky's did a really good job of trying to get him to talk. I agree. But I also think it was just rush. Like they were just trying to hurry up and rush them to the thing. So I don't think they cared about those scenes as much. Mm, that could like be. The directors. That's what I, I, I got the sense of like, they're just these the writers and director are just rushing to get them to the camp but it, he, you're right though he the, he the guy didn't seem as uh adept i don't know like the guy with buck or bucky sorry he uh he was intimidating in a way where like you know he's trying to be friendly he like, definitely but this a guy built the rapport much better than this yeah. guy <laughs> yeah this guy I, I agree with you i agree and i still but i think part of it is we just don't care yeah i still enjoyed that scene i wonder if it's trying to sh if it was trying to show it could just be that the directors rushed it and didn't really care as much or i wonder if it's showing that like the nazis are losing their best men and like they're becoming a little more incompetent at some I mean, of the things or I, I don't know that's probably not what the directors meant but if they hear you say that, then that's what they'll say now. <laughs> I'll, retcon I'll retcon it for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're spread too thin. They've got people in these positions oh, that haven't had much practice with it. <laughs> the, the, the director's list is, yes, that is right, Caleb. Exactly. Got that's it. exactly what we were going for. Thank you for picking that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I didn't know anyone would. Yeah, overall, I still liked it, but I could see I could see why I gave it a six. I mean, it's still above average, but definitely for, for an episode before finale and one that like has D-Day type stuff and like I could see why you would give it a six. I'm still really excited for the finale. I feel like a bunch of stuff's about to kick well, so off and I'm really excited to see that. Hopefully we'll see both an escape or some, some a rescue and also see some air combat. So I'm I'm excited to see yeah. that. And it's just crazy how different the show feels now compared to the beginning. It almost it feels really, like a different show now, doesn't it? It really does. Yeah. And I think they needed to because I think at one point we even said, okay, this is feeling a little bit repetitive. So I see why they yeah. didn't do as much stuff in the air, but still, it's D-Day. I agree with you that I feel like they should have shown a little bit more, but it's a tough we balance. At least, like, we should have at least followed, even though they weren't doing much, we should have at least followed them there and like seen the awe with with Rosie. You yeah. know, he was explaining, but I wish we would have seen it with him. But, uh, but yeah, overall, I can't wait for the finale. Yep. And uh, next week, I'm, I'll be sad when it's over. Yeah, for sure. We'll have to find something new to watch. I'm not going to be too sad because I get to go watch Band of Brothers for the first time after watching this. That's, so. <laughs> that's true. Oh, Band of Brothers is so good, dude. Again, I, like, I love the show, but man, Band of Brothers is just, just so different. And then I'll probably go into the Pacific. I, I need to watch that, too. I haven't seen that one. So we still got some stuff to watch. All right, well, we'll see you next week for our review of the finale. 
Yes, can't wait. I think I looked, it's like an hour and like 20 minutes long or something. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I'm it's very like a movie almost. Yeah. <laughs>